everyone! My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to E-Wednesday! Today we're going to be talking about dreams. Can you remember a dream that you had recently? What was it about? Do you daydream as well as dreaming while you're asleep? We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today we're going to be reading a story called Storyboat. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see two children here and a cat in what looks like a boat to me because I noticed that they're in some water, these big crashing waves. But the boat looks a little different to me than boats that I'm used to seeing. I notice it has a handle. Kind of makes me think of a teacup. I see a flower coming out of the boat. I see birds, butterflies. I see a suitcase in the corner here. And I notice that one of the children is holding a book. What do you think the story might be about, based on what we can see? Let's find out. Storyboat, with words by Keo McClear and pictures by Roshin Kirie. Here we are. Let's take a closer look at the pictures on this page. What do you think's going on here? What's that? Well, here is, here is just here. How do you think the people in the pictures might be feeling based on what we can see? Or here. It looks like this group of people is on a journey together and they've needed to leave their home with their belongings. We're talking about dreams today and dreams can be magical places that we go while we're sleeping or they can be hopes that we have for the future. Dreams can be sad or scary or they can be exciting and happy. What kind of dreaming would you like to do today? Here is a cup, old and fine, warm as a hug. Every morning, as things keep changing, we sit wherever we are and sip, 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 sippy sip, ah, from this cup. Let's imagine that we're holding a drink that's nice and warm. Maybe imagine your favorite warm drink to have. You're holding it in your hand. Feel the warmth around your hands. Maybe take a big whiff. Mm, that smells good. Now let's take a sippy sip sip. Ah. 
Is there something that makes you feel better when you're sad or scared? What is it? Let's see what happens next in the story. And this cup is a home. Here is a blanket, patterned and soft, color of apricots. Every night when the world feels not quite cozy and everyone seems weary from hoping and hurrying, we snuggle and dream under this blanket. And this blanket is a sail. Have you ever turned an object or something that you had around your home into something completely different when you were pretending? Like this blanket becoming a sail of a boat? What did you use and what did it become? Here isn't always the same. Sometimes it's here just for a moment. Here is a lamp, big and bright, powered by the sun. Every evening as the sky grows dark, we write and read and wonder what will we be by the light of this lamp. And this lamp is a lighthouse. Here is a song that everyone can sing. And here is the moon and a million sparkling stars. Here is a flower, bold and sweet, wild and welcoming. Every day when the weather is nice or gray and stormy, we wonder where will we be? Who will we meet as we sit in the field with these flowers? And this flower is a ladder. Where do you think this ladder is going to take them in this dream that they've created? Here is our journey that holds the warmth of a cup, the softness of a blanket, the brightness of a lamp, the strength of a flower, and the openness of a story. Every week, we dream and draw, make and play, search for treasure, find our way, and grow and wait and wait and wait, adding words to this story. And this story is a boat. Here we are. Here. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. 
Since we're talking about dreams today, let's imagine that we're going to the museum in a dream. Maybe you're going to take a pillow that's become a cloud and you're going to float there. Or maybe you're going to take a cardboard box that's become a race car and you'll drive there. Or maybe you're going to dream up something totally different. You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew, that was a really lovely journey today in our dreams. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. We've been talking about dreams today and how they can inspire us to think of a better future, or they can help us think about make-believe and pretend and imagination. We're going to be dreaming while we're awake in order to be mindful today. To start, we're going to get into a comfortable position. Let's get out any wiggles that we might have in our bodies in order to settle our minds and our bodies before we start. Ready? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <sighs> okay. To begin, we're going to take a deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. So... Now, in order for us to enter into our dream, I'm going to be using a tool today. This is a singing bowl and it's an instrument. And I'm going to ring the singing bowl. It's going to have a loud sound like a bell. When I ring the bowl, I want you to listen really closely to the sound until you can no longer hear it and just focus on the sound. If you'd like, you can close your eyes and I'm going to ring the bell to help us enter into our dream. Ready? Now we've entered into our dream. If you'd like, you can take another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're in our dream and we're in a happy, calm place. Take a look around. How do you feel in your dream? What colors do you see? of activity might you be doing in your dream? Who are you with? What kind of movement might you be doing during your dream? I think I might be dancing in my dream. So I'm going to do a dancing movement with my arms. You can decide whatever movement feels comfortable for you in your dream. I'm going to dance with my arms, swaying from side to side. If you'd like, you can add a breath to your movement. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Take one last deep breath in our dream space. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Before we wake, you can start to bring any movement back to your body to bring us back to this time and place. Maybe wiggle your fingers or wiggle your toes. And if you'd like, you can open your eyes how did you feel in your dream? I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. 
If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. We're going to start by looking at this work of art from up close first. What do you see? Let's zoom out to get a different view. What new details can you see now? Let's zoom out one last time to get the full view of this work of art. What's going on in this picture? This is a woodblock print by an artist named Kate Kolvitz. It's called Sleeping Woman with Child. A woodblock print is created when an artist carves designs into a block of wood. The wood block is then coated with ink and pressed onto paper to make a print. The white lines of the design that you see are areas where the artist carved into the wood. The lines in this design create a scene of a mother and child sleeping. What do you imagine each of them is dreaming about? Where are you when you do your best dreaming? Let's see another work of art created using a woodblock. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you notice? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What more did you discover? What do you imagine these people might be saying to each other based on what we can see? This is a woodblock print made by an artist named Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. It's called Sailboats at Fimon. Two sailboats cruise along the coast of Fimon, which is an island in the Baltic Sea off the coast of Germany where the artist spent many summers. Imagine taking a journey in a dream on this sailboat. Where would you go? What would you see? Let's take a listen and dream. Once you've awoken from your dream, let's take a look at both works of art together. What makes these two woodblock prints similar? What makes them different? Dreams can come to us while we're sleeping, or when we're awake and hopeful for a brighter future. What kind of scene would you make inspired by a dream? If you'd like, you can talk about your ideas with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at smart together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So float in the sky on your pillow that's become a cloud, or race in your box that's become a race car, or dream up something totally new, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own dream scenes using a scratch art technique. So even though we won't be carving into wood to make a wood block print like the ones that we looked at, we will still be creating art that reveals something when we carve or scratch into it. This project is going to happen in two phases, so it can be helpful to plan out when you might wanna do each phase. So for our materials today, we're going to need a few different items. First, we're going to need a piece of paper. You can use any paper that you have around your home. Any color is fine. A lighter color paper might be better for this project. Um, and the thicker the paper you can find, the better. We're also going to need some crayons or oil pastels. It doesn't matter which one you use, either one will work great. Um, and we're going to want to use some brighter colors for our project today. So you might want to stay away from your white crayons or your black crayons for this project. So try to stick to brighter colors. We're also going to need toothpicks or cotton swabs. Either one will work. And we're going to need a paintbrush or a sponge if you have a sponge and some dark paint. So I have some 
black regular paint here and I'll also show you how to make a dark colored paint out of materials that you might have in your kitchen if you don't have paint at home. So for the first part of the project, we're going to create the bottom layer of our scratch art project and that's going to be our beautiful colors that are going to be underneath and this is going to be the base layer of your project and then we'll add a large layer of black paint over it and we'll get to carve into it similar to what someone might do when they're creating a woodblock print. So when you're creating your colored scene for your dream scene that you're going to make, it doesn't really matter how you lay it out or what it is that you decide to draw because you won't be able to see it uh, as clearly as you would your other designs that you're going to do with the scratch art. So this can kind of be your abstract colors, lines, shapes, whatever you want it to be. Um, so, and you want to make sure that you fill up the whole page so that you have the option to scratch into any part of your paper. So I think this part is really fun because you just get to make blocks of colors or wavy designs or lines because it's gonna look totally different um, when your art's done. So I'm gonna use a mix of crayons and oil pastels today so that you can kind of see both. But like I said, it doesn't matter which ones that you use. And the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have at home. So don't worry about what you have. You can use either one of those things and your project will turn out exactly as you want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of my paper with my crayons and my oil, pa oil pastels. Okay, so I've colored in my paper with my crayons and my oil pastels. And sometimes when you're coloring using a lot of pressure, sometimes you might get some kind of shavings from your crayon or your oil pastel, so you might just wanna brush it off before we move on to the next step. So the next part is going to be painting over this image with dark paint. So I mentioned that you can use just regular old black paint if you have paint at home. If you don't have paint at home, you can make paint using items that you might have in your kitchen. So to make paint, we're going to need flour, salt, and water and then we're going to need some food coloring and in order to make a dark color we're actually going to be mixing lots of colors together so grab as many different food coloring colors that you have to make your dark paint so for this recipe this makes enough to cover about one small painting like this so if you're doing lots of paintings or you're doing much bigger painting you might want to double or just tri triple the recipe so to start i've got one tablespoon of flour I'm gonna put that in a bowl. I have one tablespoon of salt. Any salt that you have at home is fine. And next, you wanna add in water kind of as you see fit. So I have about two tablespoons of water in here, but I'm gonna add in about half to see how that works first. And I'm just gonna mix it together with my paintbrush. So we're gonna mix, mix, mix. And that's actually a pretty nice consistency, nice texture for paint. So I don't think I need to add any more water, but if yours is too thick, you can add more water. If it's too thin or too runny, you can add more flour to get it the way that you want it to be. Okay, so I've got my, that's gonna be the base for the paint, but now we need to make it dark. So I'm going to add in one drop of every color that I have and then we'll see what the color looks like. And this is a great way to make black paint or dark brown paint or any kind of dark color paint is to mix a bunch of colors together. Maybe that's happened to you when you're painting either on purpose or not. You've mixed a bunch of colors together and then you end up with brown or black paint on your painting, which maybe you wanted, maybe you didn't. but. That's a, an easy way to get a dark color paint is to mix a bunch of colors together. So let's see what this looks like. This is blue, green, yellow, and red mixed together. And I can already see it's this really dark, dark color. 
So it's kind of looking a little green to me. So I think I might want to add maybe some more red to make it look less green. And this can kind of be a fun experiment for you to see which colors you might want to add depending on how your dark paint is turning out. So that looks a little better to me. It doesn't look as green. It's starting to look a little more brown and black. Maybe I'll add another yellow to see if that helps. And as you can tell, this project is a little messy. So you want to make sure you get to a place where you can be kind of messy in your kitchen or on a countertop. I have some plastic down here so that I don't get anything on my table. So now I kind of have this nice brown color. We'll see if I can maybe make it a little cooler with maybe a little more blue. Oh, and I think that is the exact color that I was looking for, kind of this almost black. <laughs> Might not ever be truly black, but it's a nice dark color, which is what we're looking for for this right now. So I'm going to put these to the side. And I'm going to take my painting back, or what's going to be my painting, my drawing first. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this whole thing in this dark, dark. So I'm going to take some nice big globs and just cover the whole thing. Okay, so I've covered my picture here with my dark paint completely. You can just kind of see some of the colors peeking through, but that's okay. That kind of makes me excited for when we're going to do our drawing on top. And remember, you can also use your store-bought paint if you have that. It works just the same way, so you just cover it. And now, this is the part where you get to decide which tool you'd like to use. So, the two tools that I have are toothpicks and cotton swabs. You could also use other kind of sticks that you might have at home, or other paint brushes, or things like that. But I find both of these tools work, and most people have these lying around their home, in their bathroom, or in their kitchen. And if you want to continue working now while your paint is wet, the cotton swab is a great tool to use. And we're just gonna draw on it, just like we would um, with a crayon on any other piece of paper. Or you can wait for this to dry, and then you can use your toothpick and you can scratch your design into the painting. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So first, I'm gonna think about what scene might I want to create for my dream. So we've talked about dreams today, how they can be images or ideas that we have for the future, hopes and dreams that we have for the future, or dreams can be pretend or make-believe or imaginary places that we might go while we're sleeping or even sometimes when we're awake. So I like to think about worlds that are very different from the world that we live in uh, in my dreams. So I was thinking about Kind of a different a world that might look different. So I'm going to drag my cotton swab over the paint and you can see my colors are peeking through below. And so your cotton swab is going to be left with a lot of paint on it, but that's okay. You can just keep using it. So I was thinking about maybe a world where there's more than one sun that would be pretty cool. And so I'm just dragging my Q-tip across the paint to reveal the colors below. suns and I used my q-tip. Now if you'd like to use a toothpick you can wait for your work of art to dry and I made another work of art earlier and it's been sitting to dry. So this has been sitting for several hours so sometimes when you coat these works of art with a lot of paint it can take a long time to dry. So if you'd like to use a toothpick and scratch into your painting you might want to try to do this in a couple steps where you can 
make your painting, let it dry for a while, and then come back to it and do your, do your scratch art. So see, I've got my, my dried paint, and when I use my toothpick, I can really kind of scratch into it and add more designs that way. And this is a work of art that I did just like I did the other one. I used just crayons underneath this one and I used my same homemade paint with flour, salt, water, and food coloring. And the thing about scratch art is now you're gonna get some stuff that once you're scratching it off, the paint's gonna have to go somewhere so you can kind of tap it off and let it, let it fall away from your painting. And you can even see, so this has been many hours since this is drying and some of it, some of the areas are drier than others. But you can still, I can still scratch into it with my toothpick. So that is going to be our dream scenes using homemade scratch art. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a dream scratch art that I made. So this is the one that we made together, and it's still quite wet, so I have it on another piece of paper. This is my scratch art that I made of my dream scene with two suns, and I use my oil pastels crayons and my homemade dark paint. And this is the other one that I showed you that we worked on a little bit together. This is my other dream world, and I used my toothpick to scratch out some other areas, so we did that a little bit together too. And then I made a third one, and this one I used store-bought paint, so I wanted you to see what that looked like. And I used two different techniques, so I used the cotton swab, so you can see the thicker lines that were made by the cotton swab, and then I used my toothpick and waited until it was dry to scratch out those thinner lines that you see there. So there's lots of different ways to make dream scenes with scratch art. We would love to see yours. Please share them with us on social media and use the hashtags STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.